we're here today to talk to Bishop Neville George Owens. What a man, what a responsibility. He's Bishop of Love and Faith Church and oversees ministries all over the world. We're talking today about how can we respond to the needs of pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists who have no medical insurance, no retirement, who have no health benefits, and we want to know what can be done scripturally to respond to their needs. We're looking at pastors who are serving congregations and are coming out poor and destitute. I mean, how can the church respond to their needs? Bishop, thank you for the opportunity. In any culture, in any context, in any race, in any creed, the members of a church have a responsibility towards its chief shepherd that is set in that local house, man or woman of God, to look after them, to take care of them mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and every other angle. Therefore, if the pastor is there and is expected to wait on God in prayer, to get a solid, sound word, to take care of their needs, it is also fear that the people need to know that they have an obligation, and the word says so. You can't muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn. And that in the days of the priesthood, that's why there were compartments in the temple that food of all various kinds could be brought and be stored, that the house would never be empty, the house of the Lord, of food that would take care of the Levitical priesthood and his needs. In our present 21st century, contemporary context. It is also fear that provision needs to be made financially, like for his medical needs, scholarships funds for his children, for his family. For instance, if he was a CEO of a company, serving for 15, 10, 20, 30 years, what would the CEO walk away with? A tremendous amount of benefits. Uh, his vacation on a yearly basis all of his needs, that of his family, transportational needs, clothing needs, financial needs. Why shouldn't a subject of the kingdom who serves in the capacity of a shepherd, an apostle, or an evangelist, a teacher, or a pastor be not equally taken care of over and above those in the world? I'm hearing good intent. I'm hearing what should be done. Yes. But there's so many churches who are crying out, we are just barely surviving. How can uh, those who have so little do so much? Are there some structures or things in place where we can consider jointly taking care of the needs of a pastor? Firstly, I think we need to begin to teach our people, to re-educate, reorientate our people based on what the scripture says from Genesis to Revelation. God is a God of integrity. We have always seen him taking care of his people. He enriches them. When he tax them, it's not for himself. God doesn't need our money, but we need it more than God does. And if God put kingdom financial dominion principles in his words, he wants us to dig out those treasures, begin to teach them to his people. Now, the principles and the concepts only work if you let them work for you. So we need to apply them. We need to be thinking of establishing businesses, enterprises. We need to be thinking like a Joseph, like a Daniel, preemptive move, not just reactive, but proactive. We need to own businesses, establish business, spread business, do conglomerates, franchises in our country, in our region, and in all the world. We cannot survive on the basis of tithes and offering only. Neither did God create us to do that. He says in Deuteronomy, remember when you get into the land, it is I who give you creative ability, wisdom, knowledge and ideas to establish wealth. One creative idea when the pastor preaches can produce at least 30 to 100 millionaires if they will take that word and work the principles and the concept thereof. Sure. We here in Jamaica have airports, have roads that we have deeded to others. I mean, these principles, it seems that uh, the people who have not been taught are now operating in such a way that we have a deficit. Yeah. How do we catch up? How do we overcome? Uh, someone said that there is a cruise ship coming into Jamaica every day, and not one Jamaican owns a cruise ship. True. How can we change it? 
we need to begin with each individual. It starts with me. And then I teach another one. Not just to fish by depending on others. Not just a hand out, but a hand up. If my mentality on kingdom paradigm is not shifted and changed, for instance, repentance means getting rid of your stinking thinking. It is in our thinking that we are messed up. As a man thinketh, so is he. If we would produce the pregnant God kind of thoughts, then the kind of lack and poverty that we see in Jamaica and in third world nations would not exist. We always have a colonial mentality. Our deliverance must come from outside. Others must come and rescue us. The missionaries. But the question is, what are we doing for ourselves? Is God God of America? Is the same God that is God of America, God of Jamaica? Is he not God of the universe? Then the principles of God are dateless, ageless, and timeless. And we need not just to talk about John 3.16. But we need to find the word of God that is pregnant and relevant for our generation, our nation. That's the only time that people will begin to believe in us. When they see that the word works. And the word only works when we work the word. Now, some would suggest that the pastors are raping, robbing, fleecing, and breeding the sheep. Yes. And they haven't been properly trained to do anything else. The schools, the seminaries that are producing pastors are not teaching them finances, not teaching them business. Well, what do you recommend in, in, in light of this? All of that has to change. If we're going to prepare a man or a woman of God for the 21st century, for the real world, we have to teach them to think locally and act globally. We have got to teach them what kingdom dominion is and the principles that goes along with that. So it doesn't matter where the, you're in Africa, the Caribbean, Asia, or in Latin America, wherever you are is the same God and the same kingdom principle. Why does it work for some and not for others? It simply means that we have our gospel built up in a cultural context. We are traditionally and historically behaving with the word that we have always received from others and they give us hand-me-down revelation. But thank God it's changing because the God that we serve is a God of progressive revelation. So now, a uh, pastor wanting to retire with no 401, wanting to have a hospital visits and no health care, wanting to um, take care of his children, no scholarship fund. Zero point today, how do we move forward? Well, we always jokingly say we do not retire, but we refire. If I'm a part of a denomination that is not help, helping me with all of those things, or a church, I need to get out. I need to find God in the midst of my situation. So, just as if I was going for a job interview, they want a qualified, skilled, equipped person, and they tell you what they're looking for. Once you fit the bill, then you get the pay that is requisite to your uh, qualification and prescription. Equally so, the type of men and women of God that we are training today as pastors, teachers, missionaries, church planters, we should from the get-go teach them to depend, rely on God. The same organization that they are building these churches for should also put something in store in anticipation for those men and women that we are sending out into the mission field. But what about the independent pastor, the one who woke up uh, yesterday morning and decided he was a pastor, he rented a building, and, and there's a proliferation of these yes. churches. How do they fit into the plan? And is there an organized body of churches or pastors who may be able to respond to some of these new needs? I'm happy for that question. In Jamaica, what exists, the church structure is seven umbrella group of churches that represent seven different levels of church segments that is representative of at least 98% of all Christians in Jamaica. And it is alleged, scientifically proven, certainly by the statistics, that at least 65% of the population, which is the largest constituency, are Christian. We can put a government out or a government in if we understand the power of our unity and speak with one voice. Among those seven uh, umbrella group of churches is what is called the independent 
churches of Jamaica, of which I am president at a particular time. The challenges that we face, why would we want another umbrella group of churches? For several reasons. Number one, it must be not just relational, it must be functional. It must not only be functional, it must be administrative. It must not only be administrative, but it must respond to the basic needs of all of these independent churches that are out there. Most of them are not tax compliant. They are not subjected or obeying the laws of the country. We have to make them compliant. We have to teach them it is important to register and obey the laws of the land, that you can claim the benefits of being a citizen of Jamaica. Then we have to build fellowship, coalesce them around some goals and ideas that will speak to unity. We need unity. The ability to speak with one voice, the umbrella that covers you, you will also cover that umbrella. So we believe in participatory submission and covering. It is amazing that our work is great, but the few pastors that are coming together on a day-to-day -day basis are reaping the benefits of the unity which is their strength. These things that we speak of so loftily are now being provided for them, but it is their corporate unity and strength that is enabling us so to do. Because the resources to care for them, to set up scholarship funds for their children, to set up funds if they need to go on a vacation, to ensure that these concepts and principles that we are talking about is taught through workshops, seminars, conference, one-to-one, -one, small groups in all of their churches right across the 14 parishes of Jamaica. Now, would that be something like uh, all of these uh, vacation properties, uh, these time sharing? I mean, how do you approach actually confronting the major sponsors of tourism, vacation, retirement, credit unions, bank, how do you get them to fund and support the core organization to develop all of these uh, multifaceted parts? First of all, we're also spreading what we call Christian tourism. How many Christian do we know? Setting up a business registry mm -hmm. that we know how many Christian businesses there are. Christians that have hotels, we want to be able to sign agreements and packs with them for lower rates to facilitate some of our pastors. So those who have a business idea, we also want to set up a fund to help them to go into business themselves and that Christians begin to trade with Christians. When I went to South Africa, a city suite of six million people, blacks didn't buy from blacks. They spend money with white merchants and whatever, so the money never stayed in their neighborhood or in their uh, segment of the kingdom of God there. So we said, start doing business, trading and buying. Occupy till I come. Where's the business component in the kingdom of God? It's right there in the word. So we begin to establish Christian businesses, trade amongst Christians, so that the funds can circulate within the Christian community. For instance, if we put it on a conference, why go to the ballroom of a major hotel that is charging us here in Jamaica at least 300000 for two nights? All of that money goes out in the world. None of that money stays in the kingdom. Could we have found a Christian facility hall uh, that we spend two-thirds less that amount of money, possibly even get it for free from a brother within and be able to see our budget uh, be more functional, spread more, provide more for the people rather than us just paying over everything to those of the world. Is it possible to have stock investment from Christians all over the world? Is there an instrument being developed where we can put some money individuals, groups, corporations to facilitate this? Christians in Jamaica owns a lot of lands, churches, but they sit by and do nothing with it. Even the utilization of their church building, sometimes one day out of a seven day week and it shut up. How then do we maintain that building, the electricity, the water, the hydro, the this, the AC, it goes to waste. We can do a lot of things for multipurpose use of our buildings, of our property. One, agriculture. The government is given loans, fertilizers. If we can find Christian businessmen and women who would like to rear chicken, chicken farms, I'm talking huge chicken farms, fully air conditioned, there are groups out there that are willing to help the startup process. We can do some of those. Fishing, uh, fashion designing, uh, 
cosmetology, uh, barbering, training and employing, empowering youths in the community, sports evangelism, talent hunt for musicians who can play every type of music, help them to become more polished, but at the very same time earning a good and decent salary. Jamaica is filled with songwriters, composers, singers, musicians. They're in the inner city, rubbing their hands every day on the street corner because nobody ever sat with them and saw a seed that produces a vision in them. Now, these are all good words. Is there a short-term plan, two to three years, medium, five years, ten years? Is there a plan in place? Yes. Several things are happening as we speak. We're late, but blessings delayed is not blessings denied. It starts with the mindset change. So we are turning our Bible study group, rather than just coming to pray and to study ordinary Bible, that the scriptures come alive, that we are moving from assimilation to appropriation, from appropriation to practice, then to manifestation and demonstration of those very principles. A man can get one word or a verse, Bishop, from the Bible, and he writes a book, and he sells 10,000 copies, like a Miles Monroe whose book is now adopted in the regular school system of the Bahamas. And every primary child is taught purpose by reading one of Dr. Miles Monroe's books. We can change the world. We can change China with the principles and the concepts of the Bible if we come out of a church mentality and a church mode. In 20 years, what does Jamaica look like? Very good question. Jamaica should be a mecca of finance.